Ooh. Damn, wait. How do you... Hi there, this is Ralph from Loy Lab, and today I'm going to be demonstrating on how you could create this Google Gemini animation using Loy Lab. All right, so first, let's break it down. Statically, the asset consists of six elements, five strokes, one, two, three, four, five, and a blurred image of a combined version of the strokes. You stack them together, and then there you go. That's the structure of the asset that we're going to animate. All right, so now let's take a closer look at the animation to see what properties are being animated. Nice! The first noticeable property is the reveal path, with a timing offset on each stroke. And actually, there's another property that's being animated in here. Let's inspect it again. If you answered paths, then yeah, you're right. The paths of each stroke are animated sinusoidally. When one node of a stroke moves up or down, the parallel stroke's node does the opposite, thus creating an alternating movement. So subtle, yet so satisfying to look at. All right, so let's summarize how to animate it quickly. We know that the reveal path and the path itself are being animated. As a good reveal path, it has a timing offset to create a staggered sequence on how it reveals. With paths, it's animated sinusoidally. And then that's pretty much it. Now, let's jump to Loy Lab. Welcome to Loy Lab. So a little thing to keep in mind about Loy Lab is that there are two different modes. Design mode and animate mode. In animate mode, whatever change you do in that point in time is going to be recorded specifically and automatically to that point in time. Opposite to this one is the design mode. Whatever change you do in this mode is going to be applied throughout time. So I'll do a quick little demo. I got this heart design right here and I want to do a pop animation. To do so, let's toggle on animate mode Select the heart and just move forward in time, say maybe two seconds. Scale it up, move to another second forward, and scale it back down to its original size. And then there you go. That's a simple animation using Neulab. But say you're not satisfied with the size of this asset and you don't want to go and change the keyframes individually. This is where the design mode comes in. Just switch modes, rescale the heart, and then there you go. We've resized our asset and have also updated the keyframes relative to our scale change. This doesn't only apply to scale, but also in other properties. And that's it. Just a little something to keep in mind when using Noilab. That said, let's animate the Gemini asset. So I already have the asset prepared right here and the plan is to animate just one stroke for the entire thing. All right, let's get it started then. I'm gonna turn off the visibility of the other layers that I don't wanna animate, nor reference, just so that we can focus on one thing. I'll only animate the first stroke, so I'm gonna keep the visibility on for it. And same goes with the last stroke, because I'm gonna keep it as a reference. Nice, nice. Now let's toggle on animate mode and move our playhead to a different point in time. Let's select the first stroke here, and to edit the path, we could just double click the path or press enter to do so. And now, Let's just adjust the nodes to make it look like it's animating sinusoidally. I'm gonna move this up. I'm gonna move this down. I'm gonna move this a bit to the right and... There we go. Now, Move to another point in time, but this time, since we already have a frame that we want to repeat in this timestamp, what we could do is duplicate that specific keyframe. To do so, just hold down Option and select and drag the first keyframe to the point in time where we want it to be. Same thing for the next keyframe, I'll select the second keyframe here, then just duplicate it to make it as the next keyframe, and also the same thing again with the last. I'll hold down Option and drag the first keyframe 
to the end of the timeline. So that our first and last keyframe will be the same, making it to a perfect loop. Now to animate the reveal path, let's move the playhead back to the start and you can locate this property at the very bottom of this panel. Then here we are, let's set the start and end to both 0%. I'll move forward in time again and then set the end to 100%. We can select the added keyframes and adjust the timing on how fast we want it to reveal. Now, I'll move to another point in time again, and then set the start to 100%. Again, we can just adjust the keyframes to control how long we want it to transition. And to save us some time, here's the magic trick. I'll toggle off animate mode, duplicate and invert the scale Y of the first row. So from this value, I'll make it to a negative and I'll also change the stroke color for this one. And then there we go. Nice, we have a mirrored version of the first stroke without needing to animate the last stroke. Now, what about the strokes in between? Well, we could just duplicate the first stroke and just adjust the nodes to match the second stroke. And at the middle or the notes we've animated, we can just select them all and translate them a bit to the left to make it look like the original design. Nice. I'll also do the same thing again for the second stroke. I'll duplicate it and invert it so that we could have it as a fourth stroke. And no. I'll just also change the color for it. For the last stroke, still the same thing again. Let's duplicate a stroke, adjust it to match the middle stroke in the original design. Nice! We're almost there! Only thing missing is to adjust the timing of the reveal path to make it look like it's staggering. So let's toggle back on animate mode and what we want to do is just adjust the start of each reveal transition 0.1 seconds after the previous stroke. So for example, we have here our first stroke's reveal, the end begins at 0 seconds, and the start at 1.6 seconds. Knowing that, let's just adjust the next stroke's timing 0.1 seconds after the previous one. So let's tweak it to begin at 0.1 for the end and 1.7 seconds for the start. Just adjust the timing for each strokes, then that's pretty much it. Bada bing, bada boom. That's how you animate the Google Gemini asset. Congrats on finishing it. Like, yeah, congrats. You can now then use this asset to add to your websites or to your applications. Anything that you do in Loi Lab could be added to your websites or applications. So, yeah, just a side note. Yeah, all right, that's it. Thanks for joining me in this tutorial. If you find this tutorial to be helpful, do give us a follow on our social channels to stay updated with everything about Loi Lab or anything about motion. Thanks again. Stay curious, stay creative. And that's it for my, what do you call this again? Page tutorial.